welcome to Kujo Sound. Um, this video is a little bit awkward because we're going to talk about something really interesting that I found out when I was doing my um, Red Dead Redemption video. There are a few things to mention about the sound design. Still, as I've said in the previous two videos, and basically in any video about any video game on this channel, it's not because it's bad. That is, I've There's just moved just to a new to house. I'm Almost building my my new sound Kujo Sound Studio. Everything's sound. great in that Especially regard. My only so problem so is that the, right now I am working out of this like, cupboard-sized studio, and you can maybe see it in here. Um, my little computer, actually, with the video from yesterday, and uh, the the walls are completely unfinished, and there's a lot of crap placed around this room now the problem is that first of all my my motu sound card uh, decided to 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 just not work anymore so well i think it's the firewire connection but that doesn't matter so i cannot connect my uh, ordinary xlr microphones to it um and then i can't record the dialogue that i or the voiceover that i normally do so what I did was that I decided, okay, I can just record this dialogue with my phone um, for, for the video. And I don't know if you noticed uh, the difference between the Red Dead Redemption 1, 2, and 3 video and my fourth video, the one that came out yesterday. Morning, and a couple of meters, that's about six to seven feet for you Americans. Why is that? Most likely because the recording Things process like is well. set. Where you both have to mark up areas and set properties for each and every one of them. Some generative and procedure calculations... But what I noticed, and I just, I don't know why I forgot and didn't think complex. about it, but I came, came, was pretty shocked when I, when I, when I heard the material. Because I had completely, I don't know why, like, like 10 years of going to the conservatory and the university and other things, and I completely... Uh, neglected all my knowledge of acoustics so just recording in this room um, made everything sound like absolute um, hell first of all it was on a phone so there, the, the recording in itself is bad but the reverberation and the room tone of this place is just horrible so what do I do first I tried to run it through RX6 uh, and and do some 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 um, some voice denoising, some voice cleaning, de-reverbing, and other things. Um, and and it was actually quite interesting because normally I would record all my voiceover at my previous in-house job, which was at CD Projekt Red, in a um, not a perfect studio, but a very well-treated um, kind of silent room, which meant that I could just literally hold my microphone myself and just talk, and it, it, it worked great. Um, all I had to do was slight denoising and compression and a couple of things and it, it worked really well. Anyway, when I was doing this here, first I did one recording and I, I spent like 15 minutes trying to clean it up until I came to the realization that I always preach to others that if you have a bad recording, you should redo it. Or at least try and figure out how you can get the best recording possible before you start the cleaning process at all to begin with. Which is actually a lesson I'll give to anyone out there. That it's really important that you get your source material as good as possible. If you can't get it uh, perfect or as close to perfect as possible, then you need to figure out how to get rid of all the problems so that you have to do as little cleaning as possible. So I'm pretty happy with the voiceover that ended up in the Red Dead Redemption 2 part four video that I just released. But what eventually happened was that I took the recording, I'll, I'll show you some bits from it. So in the end, while I was sitting here, how to figure it out, um, my daughter who was um, at daycare, um, I took her duvets, she has two. And literally like this. I'd be holding the microphone like this um, and just simply talking. So what I would do was that I would turn on the recorder on the phone and and uh, then go to my um, my Google Doc page with the script for the video and then just read it aloud straight into the phone like this um, to try and get rid of as much reverberation as possible. Um, it took two attempts because first I was holding the phone too close to my mouth so it had lots of digital distortion 
And then I moved uh, the phone further away, kind of like this, I guess. I felt pretty stupid sitting in here in this room with this duvet over my head. Uh, but it worked. It worked. I got a recording that was kind of clean-ish. Or at least cleaner or clean enough for me to take it into RX-6. And you can probably hear it already in this video. This room sucks. Um, so looking forward to when when my new studio is ready. Um, we just uh, ordered all the parts, actually. Anyway, so let's go into RX-6 and talk about the cleaning process of how we make it sound the way it is in the video. Because I was trying, of course, to make it sound like the previous videos where I'm pretty happy with the quality. Take a look. Okay, so this the remainder of this video will actually be recorded under the duvet <laughs> like this. <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty stupid, but anyway, so I go into RX6 like this, and here we can hear the original recording. Early reflections which are calculated on the fly takes care of how complex it sounds. Well, let's try the Lancaster repeater here in the city of Saint Denis without getting I recorded this as a video file in MP4 format uh, just because I didn't want to use the voice recorder on my phone. I kind of figured that that might compress the voice a little more than the video format or like the camera recording normally would. Um, but didn't take the reverberation into account, like I said. So you set properties for each area. Some generative and procedural calculations done, but everything is but everything means it will play these systems like this where you both have to mark up areas and set properties for each and every one of them some things may be generative and procedural but so i ran it through rx6 tried to clean it up by removing all the low frequencies down here which sound and different from areas to area on each gun now you may think nah in big games like this they i tried to open up the d reverb um and make a small profile and then just uh, just edit things the, the, the problem with that is as you can hear if you do, do this but we specifically want wood creaky to play instead this could be overridden by such a setting door the open same. space to play but a different early reflection and perhaps a small local that quite quickly we get artifacts and it quite quickly sounds super fake and instead of actually removing the reverb it just sounds bad so i tried to do some denoising both the spectral and the voice denoiser uh kind of worked not really but so what i did was that i then went under the duvet uh, and started talking into the microphone into the voice recorder just as i am actually doing right now um feel stupid coming back to this as I promised myself this would be a bad thing because this recording is much cleaner than the one into the open room. So I can then do a D reverb, but a much more subtle one. Just like, I'll just cut off reverb like 3 to B. Cut off all the low frequencies, but just with a hard cut, marking it like this in arc 6 and cutting it off. And then do a small... EQ spike here around. I usually do a cut here at um, 3000 hertz and plus minus 1000 hertz. So it goes from 2 to 4000 hertz, which is about, so basically the entire format area of the voice. And I uh, bump that up. Usually 3 to 6 decibels. Could be more, could be less, doesn't matter. And then I compress this voice kind of. Uh, just to make sure that there is some compression so that all, all noise is sort of like gated out as well. I do that over in WaveLab with my SSL, my Waves SSL compressor here, uh, both the master and the channel strip, which is really cool. Quite often doesn't even sound better. Some call this tails, others call it echo, some call it choir, some call it reverb, some call it the environment. And the reports, the audio report, as you can tell, the, 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 that result is much better than the one that I tried to polish first, which is com complete turd, the first recording that we had. The second recording with the duvet is also pretty bad, but the cleaned up version turned out pretty good. And then we put that into the video about Red Dead Redemption and turned out really, really good, I think. Uh, it's very close to the other videos that I have, as close as possible. And let that be a lesson to you, as in 
just just do your recordings properly. Um, and if you can't, then use duvets and other things to get as close to properly as possible because the cleaning process will be much less tedious, but also it will require much less of you and much less time. And there's no point in polishing a turd because it will forever stay a turd. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope you learned something today. Today's very long lesson that I'm pointing fingers at you guys out there. See you next time. Kudio Sound. Signing out.